receive that and apply it to our lives as we leave. So Heavenly Father, come. We thank you. We praise you. Amen. Join us as we pray some more. And I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, Child of weakness, watch and pray, Find in me thine all in all. For Jesus paid it all, All to him I hail. Sin had left a crimson stain, He walked. Dear white as snow Lord now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leopard spots and melt this heart of stone for Jesus Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as died my soul to save my lips shall still repeat that Jesus made it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Yes, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Jesus, Jesus,
praise you again and again because all that i have is a Except for a heart singing, Alleluia, Alleluia. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With these arms stretched wide, I will worship you so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah hallelujah and I know it's not much but I'm nothing else fit for a Except for a heart sing, hallelujah, hallelujah. So come on, my soul, oh, don't you get shy of me, lift up your songs, cause you've got a line inside of those lungs, get up and praise the Lord. on my soul well, don't you get shy of me lift up your songs cause you've got a line inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord come on my soul well, don't you get shy of me lift up your songs cause you've got a line faith rise up and sing of your great and glorious king you are strong and you feel weak in your broken 
church rise up church with broken wings fill this place with his songs again of our God who reigns on high by his grace again will fly we will shout to the north and the south sing Jesus is Savior to all. Jesus is Savior to all. Jesus, Jesus, He's the Savior to all. He's the Lord of heaven and earth. Shout, He will shout to the north and the south. Sing to the east and the west. Jesus. Is Savior to all, Lord of heaven and earth. You're the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, you're the Lord of heaven and earth. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're the Lord. goodness. Okay, I'm just going to put that back there. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get this figured out at some point, and then we won't need to wear masks, and then it'll be done. Um, so uh, my name is Pastor Amy, and I serve as one of the pastors here, and I just got some announcements for you. Um, first of all, we are still looking for a church administrative assistant. This um, is a part-time position Typically, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, 9 to 3, but there is flexibility, and um, it says a pleasant disposition, <laughs> confidentiality, and technological skills are a must. So if you fulfill those three things, and this is something that you're interested in, please come and talk to Pastor Greg or me. I can give you some information. Yeah, just take a moment if this is something that, that is... Um, you're interested in, because we do need an administrative assistant. Um, 
Yeah, secondly, I uh, just want to draw your attention to the Calgary Church Fire Compassion Fund. And so um, in the summer, what happened, uh, Calgary Vietnamese Alliance Church, uh, as an act of arson, uh, they're, they're building... Can I just borrow someone's... As an act of arson, um, their building had been burnt down, and due to some uh, language uh, misunderstanding, they didn't have any insurance. And so um, the district and other churches in our, the district office and churches in the area are just coming together to, to support and um, donate for the rebuilding. So you can, um, in the, the envelope that's in the back there, you can just write the Calgary Church Fire Compassion Fund, and we will just make sure that that gets sent to the right place. What else did I have circled? Oh, yes. So some of you maybe didn't notice, but some of you must have noticed that since we reopened, we haven't had any coffee. So what happened is we kind of stopped using it for a good chunk, and then we went to go turn on this 15-year-old coffee maker Surprise, surprise, it no longer worked. So we have been uh, uh, waiting and we finally got our new coffee maker in. But what we also realized is the coffee didn't taste good. Did we, I think we all are aware of this. Anyone who had been here before, it just didn't taste good. And we thought maybe it was the maker, maybe it was how much we were brewing. Well, Farrell did some taste testing. No, it's just the coffee we are buying that was terrible. So, but what we are doing is we have found two different coffees that have potential. So next week, we are going to do a coffee taste off. Use our new machines, because we want to make sure that the coffee is like worth drinking. So come early, 9.30, we'll have a pot of each. It will be a blind taste test, so there's no like partiality in it. And you can vote which coffee you would like us to continue using. So if you really deeply care about the flavor of the coffee, please come, 9.30. Those of you who could care less about the taste of the coffee, come at 9.30 to just be a part of the excitement and, and celebration of the return of coffee. Um, so that's next week, 9.30, here on Sunday. I Oh yeah, I alluded to this when I was talking about the Calgary uh, Church Fire Compassion Fund. But just in the back, for those of you that are online or on site, we have boxes there for your tithes and offerings. For those of you online, you can uh, mail it in, drop off your tithes and offerings at the office, or you can go online and um, do that in a myriad of ways. So now I would like to invite Danny Johnston right, Johnston? Uh, he, this is Danny. Give him a round of applause from Bear Lake Bible Camp, and he's going to just kind of give us a short update. Thank you for lending me. Thanks, Amy. Uh, it's, uh, it's really good to be here today. Um, as I, I was looking in my calendar just at the end of the week here to see when the last time I was here was, and that was the last time I was here was all the way back in 2019, uh, so it's it's good to be here again. It's a lot a lot has changed since the last time I've been here. This sanctuary looks awesome, so it's it's good to be here. It's good to see you guys. I, I've missed being with you in person. So uh, I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about our last summer. Uh, so back in March of 2021. Uh, we were meeting as a board, and we were trying to decide what we would do for the summer of 2021. And uh, at that point, uh, there was no, we had no um, indication from the government as to whether uh, things like summer camp would be allowed to happen. Uh, so at that point, we decided that we would uh, open up registration for four weeks of day camp. Uh, and then we decided we'd just pray and pray and pray and pray that God would actually allow us uh, to have camp, uh, that the government would allow us to have camp. So we made that decision. We opened up our registration, and we waited. And, and, and March turned into April, and April turned into May, and May turned into June, and we hadn't heard anything about whether or not we'd be allowed to have camp. And there was kids signed up, 
people waiting to come, and we still hadn't heard. And then on June, I think it was June 16th, two weeks before we were supposed to have our first week of camp, uh, the government opened up the restrictions so that we would uh, be allowed to have camp, and that was, that was really good news. It was, it was down to the wire, last minute though, it was a little, uh, a little stressful in some ways. Uh, but the really one, what was really cool about this announcement was that um, they said that we were allowed to have day camps and overnight camps. And we weren't planning on having overnight camps because we just didn't really think that that was, that that was gonna happen. But um, we had intentionally left two weeks in August open so that we could have overnight camps if that was allowed. So on June 16th, we started scrambling and we, we opened up registration for overnight camp and we started, we started calling everyone we knew to see if they would come and be cabin leaders. Because at the time, because we had only planned for day camp, we only really had enough cabin leaders to bring in 32 kids a week for overnight camps. So we started calling people and, and putting our needs out on Facebook and that sort of thing. And, and the Lord was able to provide us with enough uh, cabin leaders that we had 50 more kids than what we initially thought was going to be possible. Uh, and that was just a, a huge blessing. We worked in partnership with some other uh, ministries like Camp Wapiti, for example. They sent a couple of their cabin leaders over our way because they weren't running camps that week and that sort of thing. And it was a really good thing. And, and the important, the, the reason, of course, that this was a good thing and that this was important is because we had an opportunity to share the gospel with, with over 200 kids this summer. And, and we got to share with them about the hope that can only be found in Christ. And you know, the world, th this world has always been hopeless, and there's always been, you know, it, there, there's, there's never been hope in, in anything in this world besides Jesus. But I, I find in these last couple of years, as we've gone through this pandemic and, and all these questions and uncertainty, that, that, that hopelessness has been more apparent than ever to everybody. Not just as Christians, but to everybody. And, and it was so good to be able to share the hope that can be found in, in Jesus and his death and resurrection uh, with, with campers this summer. Uh, and it was, just, it was just a good thing. You know, we didn't, we didn't run camp in 2020, so it was just so good to have camp again and to have noise. <laughs> out at camp, it, just to hear kids laughing, screaming, yelling, having fun, uh, to hear kids singing songs at chapel and that sort of thing again, and it was just, it was just incredible, and the Lord really provided for us in that. Um, so coming up this next summer, we are planning for a, for a full return to overnight camps, um, that's what we're going to plan towards and work towards. We're going to have the staff ready so that if that can happen, it will happen. And then, you know, if we have to pair back, we can. But, but overnight camps is plan A, what we're, what we're uh, working towards doing. Uh, so you guys can expect to, to see some dates and that sort of thing uh, come out to you guys pretty soon here about those sort of things. Um, we also had a fundraiser just uh, about two weeks ago, and that was a, it was a really encouraging thing. Um, we, we were able to let the community know some of our needs and that sort of thing, and, uh, and the Lord really provided for us in our finances. And, you know, I was actually able to tell our community about some projects that we had going on around camps, things that needed to be fixed and that sort of thing. Uh, we had, for example, we had some mold in our in our boys' washroom that we needed to get fixed, and it was going to look like about a five thousand dollar repair. And at the end of that um, fundraiser, somebody just came up to me and said, "Hey, you know, I I heard you have a guy coming tomorrow to fix that, but cancel him. Don't let him come because I'm going to come do that for free." Uh, and you know, so there's been some cool things that the that the, we've seen the Lord providing in in that way. But um, yeah, we're really, really excited to have camp again in summer of 2022 and to be able to share the gospel with more kids that need to hear it and also to help uh, young Christians to be able to grow and mature in their faith. Um, 
So, yeah, please, please be looking and watching for, for camp dates and that sort of thing, and I'll also be updating you guys on how you can get involved in the future as well. So uh, thank you so much for having me here today, and I'd love to chat with anyone who wants to talk after the service. So thank you. So why don't we pray for Bear Lake Bible Camp and for Danny and their crew out there. So if you would just extend your hand out towards Danny here as he represents Bear Lake for us. Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful uh, for the, the children who heard the gospel this summer. And Lord, for years and years and years, you have blessed Bear Lake Bible Camp and you've used them to bless others. Uh, I know my children have gone out there. It's just been exciting to see the kind of change that has happened in, in my kids and in many others because of Bear Lake. And so, Lord, we just bless Danny. We bless the leadership at Bear Lake. We bless uh, the, the land out at Bear Lake, Lord, that you would use that space to further your kingdom in amazing ways. And Lord, as we look forward to next summer uh, and all the stuff that's going to happen between now and then, Lord, we just bless your name and the plans you have that you would use Bear Lake Bible Camp and Danny to further your gospel and that many would be saved. So we thank you, Jesus. We love you. We pray these things in your powerful name. Amen. Awesome. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Wow. Uh, fantastic. Thank you guys for, for coming in today. Uh, we have a special guest. You might be here because we have a special guest. If you came today and you didn't know we had a special guest, well, I get to just slightly introduce you. So call it. Why don't you come on up here? I'm going to grab your podium here. Come on up. And we've known Colette for years. Uh, she is a, a special friend to us. Um, and she's going to introduce herself a little bit uh, as she speaks here. But just know she's an international worker. Uh, she is amazing and wonderful, and we have just loved getting to know her. I think one of my first international workers that I met was Colette, and I think it was back in maybe 2003, something like that. You came and, and did some, uh, some visiting with our church and with our small groups, which was fantastic. But I'm just, I have known Colette for a while and just appreciated her all this time. So let me just pray for Colette, uh, and we'll let her uh, introduce herself a little bit better. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you, and we're so thankful for your workers. We're thankful, Lord, to hear about the, the ministries like Bear Lake and things like that that have been producing great fruit, and now we're going to hear from Colette. And Lord, as you, as you draw our hearts together, as you speak to us, Lord, we want to hear what you have to say. We want to lean into what you have, to have for us. We want to hear about what, what's happening in our world, Lord, and we just bless Colette to speak your words to us and that she would be able to open Scripture to our minds and our hearts, and that we would, we would receive everything that you have for us today. We just bless, call it in your name, Jesus Christ, to be fully used by you this morning. So we love you, Jesus. We thank you. We pray these things in your powerful name. Amen. 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 Well, wow, what a full house. And uh, really, I... Uh, see all the changes that have been made and I just you know want to say it's just beautiful in here and uh, and a lot of beautiful faces staring back at me that's wonderful well for those of you who don't know me um, I do have quite a history here with, at Beaver Lodge Alliance but um, in 1995 26 years ago I stood on the platform of the Grand Prairie Alliance Church and was commissioned uh, to be their representative to fulfill the will of the Lord to take the good news of his kingdom to the nation of Guinea. And I served as their Christian education director uh, for two years. I spent four years in Regina at the Canadian Theological Seminary and was then hired and assigned as an international worker with the Christian Missionary Alliance. So I spent one year in Quebec learning the basics of the French language, and then I went to the countries of Mali for two years, and Burkina Faso for two years in West Africa. I returned to Canada for a one-year home assignment and then was assigned to Guinea. So this past June, I returned to Canada to fulfill a one-year home ministry assignment, after which I'm going to be a self-employed servant of the Lord. <laughs> and, um, you know, while this overseas chapter of my service to Jesus may be over, my service to Jesus is never going to end until I see him face to face. So you've been following this series of messages with the theme of why. 
And today I have the privilege of the topic of why mission. What is the mission that we as followers of Jesus are on? So I'm an intent intentionally going to drop the S on missions so I can emphasize the mission that Jesus gave to his followers, all of his children, all of his called out ones, all of his future brides. So in Mark 16, we read, and Jesus said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. When we use the word missions, mission with the S on the end, we often leap in our mind to think about someone who's gone to another country. But missions is what we do because of the mission that Jesus has given to all of us, his disciples. In Acts 1.8, you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So 25 years ago, I went to Africa on mission with Jesus. The command that he had given to go into all the world and preach the good news of the kingdom. I was sent by a body of Jesus' disciples to be their representation at the ends of the earth. Well, what I discovered as I settled into my home in Africa, I was no longer at the ends of the earth. I was again in Jerusalem. I had neighbors to witness to, I had a city to witness to, and I had to teach this command to tell people everywhere to the friends that I had made in West Africa. And to them, this command was to the city that they were living in, which was the city I was living in, and we had the same Jerusalem. And that also now made places like Canada the ends of the earth. So it doesn't matter where you are, you are always in Jerusalem. You always have your Samaria, the community around you, and you always have the ends of the earth. So you are at the ends of the earth while you are living in Jerusalem. So that was kind of an interesting kind of light bulb that went on for me. Years ago, I read a book by John Piper called Let the Nations Be Glad, and I recommend it to you because it more fully answers this question what is the mission that Jesus wants us to be on? Piper uses the term missions as the mission that God is asking us to partner with him on. So Piper has said, missions is not the ultimate goal of the church. Worship is the mission of the church. Missions exist because worship doesn't. Worship is the ultimate, not missions, because God is ultimate and not man. When this age is over and the countless millions of the redeemed fall on their faces before the throne of God, missions will be no more. It is a temporary necessity, but worship abides forever. Worship, therefore, is the goal of missions. Jesus' mission was to bring the nations to the white-hot enjoyment of God's glory, and that is the mission that he has left us to do. But while I would say that's a really good book to read and I would recommend it, I want to take you to the best source of information and knowledge, and that's God's book. Because the Creator's words are more powerful and more authoritative than the words of His servants. I'm God's servant, and I want to, to direct you today to God's words about the mission of Jesus. Well, Jesus' fundamental mission on earth was to fulfill God's plan. So in John 18, 37, Jesus answered, For this I have been born, and for this I have fully come into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So our mission is to tell others the truth about Jesus and about God his Father. In Luke 19, 10, it says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save those who were lost. In the beginning of the book of Genesis, God walked and talked with man here on this earth. Christ came to the same earth to seek out and to save sinners, to eat with them, to talk with them, and to show them God's love. In Luke 5, 32, Jesus said, I have come to call those I have 
Come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know that they are sinners and need to repent. Jesus didn't passively wait for the lost to come to him, but he went after them. He went to where they were. And this is our example. He didn't have mass meetings in some pasture someplace and asked everybody to come and listen to him there. He, this contrasted with the former command that God had given for everybody to go worship in the temple. It was a fixed location. So Jesus was showing us, his followers, a new example to follow. In Mark 16, we read, And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Well, Jesus explains his active mission in a parable that's found in Luke 15, 1 to 7. In this parable, Jesus weaves a story about a man who lost his sheep, and he leaves the rest of his sheep to go and find just one lost sheep. And Jesus concludes the parable by saying, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And then he tells a similar parable about a lost coin in Luke 15, 8 to 10, again concluding with the joy of heaven over one repentant sinner. Jesus also tells a story about a prodigal son who returns to his father's house after making many harmful decisions that separate him from his home. The father welcomes his son with joy into his house when the son returns, just as God welcomes his children who return to him with a repentant heart. So in Mark 16, 15, Jesus says, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. So we follow the model of Jesus to go, <clears throat> to seek, and to save those who are lost. Well, we live in the world. So the going out into all the world is just like going out our front door. In Romans 10, 14, how then can they call on him who have they not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching? And how can they preach unless they are sent? You know, I'm really thankful to be a part of a body of believers who has always taken this command to go seriously. God gave this command to his whole entire church, to each and every one of us, to go to the Jerusalem, to the, those in our community to those who are our neighbors, to go to Samaria, who are those in our community, and to take those to the ends of the earth. Well, for me, Grand Prairie right now is my Jerusalem, and the peace country is my Samaria, and the, and the ends of the earth is now where I've come from, which is Guinea. So here today, Beaver Lodge, where is your Jerusalem? It's your neighbors. And the peace country is your Samaria. And, though, and you are partnering with those who are your representatives to the ends of the earth. On your missions board, just behind the wall here, uh, you can see, I can see, others come in and they see, these are the people that we have sent. So you are faithfully fulfilling the entire command of God, not just a part of it. God's word has many commands and many precious promises that he's given us his children, his called out ones and his future bride. So practically, uh, how do we, how do I, how do you fulfill God's command to practically tell everyone about him? Well, in 1 Peter 3.15, there's some practical counsel in that verse. And it reads, But in your heart honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is within you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. So what is the hope that is in you? Can you express it to somebody? John Piper wrote that hope, Christian hope, is that when God promises that something's going to happen, you put your trust in that promise. Christian hope is a confidence that something will come to pass because God has promised that it's going to come to pass. Um, years ago, I started making a little book of sayings because, well, I bought those, you know, those little 365-day calendars, you know, little things like this, and you flip the page every day of the year, 
and, but you tear it off and what do you do with that? You, maybe you throw it in the garbage or you know, do you save it or put it one or two of them in your Bible as a bookmark? Well, I decided I was going to make my own uh, little book of sayings. And um, these are things that I find so precious because they're things that I feel God has really spoken to me. And so I read this quite often just to have an, a remembrance of the different things that the Holy Spirit laid on my heart. And one of those things that I found so precious that I wanted to share with you this morning was... Never allow the things you don't understand to obscure or to keep you from the areas of truth which, in which God has provided clear understanding. Never allow the things that you don't understand to keep you from the areas of truth in which God has provided clear understanding. When I gave my life to Christ when I was 27 years old, right from the very beginning, when I heard and when I read that Jesus was planning on returning, that he would make a new heaven and a new earth where there was going to be no more sin, and that he was planning on making his home here on earth with mankind, and that he was going to reign here, and that the gospel needed to be preached to all nations before this was going to come about, well, I just knew that I wanted to be a part of that. And so I started being a part of his plan in my Jerusalem, and that time that was uh, Saskatoon. So in the church, I volunteered for everything that people asked me to volunteer for. I volunteered for childcare, I uh, worked in the sound booth, I was a youth sponsor, I went on the weekly evangelism outings, I, I had no training in any of these things, but as I did them, I got trained. So when it came time for me to move my Jerusalem location, I was already in the habit of being available to whatever the Lord needed of me. But I was also a part of a faithful team who was committed also to bring the good news of the kingdom to their neighbors. You know, I use the word team as perhaps maybe a modern day way to express what God's word calls the body of Christ. You know, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the feet, the working together in harmony to live and to move and to act as Jesus' body. So as someone from among you, a part of your body, I just want to tell you that together we have accomplished what God has asked us to accomplish at the ends of the earth in Guinea. Uh, together we began a community radio station that began broadcasting 14 years ago and it broadcasts the good news of the kingdom to a city of three million people every day. We began an infant rescue center. Uh, that operated for eight years and it saved the life of over 50 children. And this be also became a model for the government uh, in Guinea to create adoption laws and a code of conduct for orphanages. We began church services and discipleship in the country's main prison, as well as a hairdressing school and evangelism amongst the men and the women in the prison. We began the empowering of women to develop their spiritual gifts. We began the discipleship and follow-up of people who had professed their faith in Christ through the community radio station. And these were things that Jesus asked us to do for him. And I believe that the effectiveness of the radio especially came from a team of, of people who literally uh, chose and accepted and willingly accomplished their role in the team. I wasn't the only one that God had given a vision for this project. There was teams of people in various parts of the world that prayed for 10 years so that there would be a Christian radio station in the capital city of Guinea. And God raised up people. He raised up people like you to participate in these projects. And so I thank you today. Um, Prayer is the work of the ministry, and service is gathering up the results. I have had this as one of my things that I think about all the time. For so many years, I don't even really remember who said it first. But prayer is the work of the ministry, and service is gathering up the results. 
So in the 21 years that I was in Guinea, I had partners from many Alliance churches who were there with me. And Beaver Lodge Alliance, I knew that you were there with me too. I knew you were a part of the prayer team, a part of the providing team, and you partnered with me, and together we partnered with Jesus to be telling people everywhere about who he was. And together we provided what was needed to fulfill Jesus' command to tell people everywhere about him. And hundreds of thousands of people heard of Jesus through the Renaissance radio station and responded in faith. We know that this is true because in the six weeks that we broadcast this program called the Prayer and Healing Program, every person that called in for prayer, we recorded their name, we recorded their prayer request, we recorded who they were, and we called them back and we asked them, how has God answered your prayers? And our, the prayers. And we know that there are thousands upon thousands of testimonies of answered prayer and that these are thankful souls that Jesus has healed, has provided for, and has shown himself as the God of heavens who intervenes in their life. In Romans 12, 1, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. In Romans 22, 12, Jesus says, Look, I'm coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all the people according to their deeds. Our work for God is to proclaim Jesus. And it's the Spirit's work to save and to give eternal life. I am really thankful and I have really felt satisfied with what God has given me to do for him. And I trust that you do feel the same way. How he has partnered with you, with each of us, to bring his word to our community, to your neighbors and to the ends of the earth. So I'm thankful for the privilege that I've had of serving in a foreign land and now I'm going to be thankful, I'm going to say it in advance, I'm going to be thankful for whatever God gives me to do here as I've come back after these 25 years and have now uh, made Grand Prairie my Jerusalem for this time. In Ephesians 6, 8, it says, Remember that the Lord will reward each of us for the good that we do. In 1 Corinthians 12, There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. And in 1 Corinthians 3.8, the one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose, and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. So we have worked together to bring the good news of the kingdom to the people of Guinea. And you work together to bring the good news of the kingdom to the people in your town, in Beaver Lodge. Well, I've concluded my service in Guinea, and I'm not going to be returning. And God has raised up national leaders to fulfill his mission. They're competent, they have God's vision, and equipping to carry on his work. And so my time of service there has come to a completion. So, as I was beginning my process of leaving Guinea, I decided I needed a little bit of time to reflect, to do some self-evaluation. Just reflecting on all the things that God had taught me, the training he had given me. And I also wanted some time to ask him, Lord, how can I use what you have taught me to serve you in this new place? And what I have heard from the Lord is that though my location may have changed, my assignment and my strategy to fulfill my assignment has not changed. So my assignment, for me, doing my part to fulfill God's plan for every tribe, tongue, and nation to hear and to respond to the good news so that God will be worshipped by someone from every tribe, every tongue, and every nation on earth. And the strategy that God gave me many years ago to fulfill that was, look and see where I am working and join me there. It's not to do my own thing, it's to do God's thing. To look and see what he's doing and be available. 
So the why question, why am I motivated to do this? Well, quite frankly, I just want Jesus to return. And I want him to set up his kingdom here on earth. And I want to get out of this body of sin. <laughs> and I want to live the future that God has told me he's preparing for me. And so whatever he needs, if he needs someone to do something to work out his plan, I just say it. I'm all in and I'm willing to serve. There are so many things that God wants and needs done to fulfill his mission, his future plan for his church. And he is just seeking ordinary people like you and me to be just available to work out his plan to fulfill his mission to tell people everywhere about him. And in my experience with God, I know if he asks me to do something, and I'm certain that he's the one that's asking, well, I know he's going to provide me with what I need to get his job done. And I have said yes to the Lord for quite a few things that I thought were not in my training or in my expertise or in my comfort zone. Uh, you know, before I started the radio station, uh, I knew how to turn the radio on. And that was that. And then someone gave me a tour of a radio station in Edmonton for 30 minutes. And I thought, well, how hard can that be? Well, I, th I found out it was a little bit harder than a 30-minute um, instruction. But I have come to, and I've learned from experience, that when you do say yes to the Lord, he's going to give you the strength and the courage and the resources that you need to get that job done. And he doesn't expect us to do his job with perfection. He expects us to do it with obedience. And that's what he really wants. And he's made each of us unique. He doesn't have a cookie cutter. We're not all the same. And what I would say would be my assignment might not be your life assignment. My strategy that God gave me might not be your strategy. But God gives to each and every one of us things that he wants us to do. And he wants us to just be obedient. And he fills in what we can't do. Because if we could do everything in our own strength, where would we leave work uh, and room for the Holy Spirit to enter in? The Holy Spirit wants us to do things we can't do. He wants us to do things we don't know how to do. That's just a little out-of-the-box thing. But um, that is how he works. He doesn't, want to he doesn't want us to receive the glory. He wants to receive the glory. So he gives us assignments to do that we can't do in our own strength. So in the past 21 years that I've lived in Guinea, there were a lot of challenges, hard situations, some painful circumstances. And from time to time, you know, I asked Jesus, you know, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? And he always answered me with, just keep your eye on the prize, and the prize is Jesus. Being with him in the here and the now is really precious, but the ultimate goal is that someday I'm going to be with him, and I'll be able to see him face to face. And so how do I keep my eye on the prize? Well, for me, I think of keeping focused on what I call the end game. In Revelation 19, 7 to 9, let us be glad and rejoice, and let us give honor to him, for the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb, and his bride has prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear, for the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words from God. So for me, I always try and think about how I'm preparing to be the bride of Christ. I don't know when Jesus is returning, but I do know that he's planning on returning. When the Lord returns, I fully intend to be found at work in my father's business. And this takes intentional planning. It doesn't just happen by chance. I have always, since the beginning of my Christian life, been motivated by the Lord's return. But I only studied that in the Word, kind of superficially. And a few years ago, I just decided that 
Superficial was not sufficient. So I have learned to love reading the book of Revelation. I had hardly ever read it before because I thought it didn't have much practical application for daily living. But I really discovered as I read it uh, how wrong I was. At a certain time in my life, God knew what I needed to help me through some really difficult seasons. And so he gave me the book of Revelation. It's his word, it's his teaching, it's his instruction to encourage About six years ago, I was challenged through a message to read the book of Revelation every week for three months. And let's see what the Lord will say to you. So I took up the challenge. And what I discovered was that it wasn't as impractical to daily living as I had originally thought. And I kind of think that's a principle for most of Scripture. As we put ourselves before the Lord, asking him for illumination into his word, He loves to give us that illumination because he loves for us to know him. He loves for us to know him through his word. So now I try to read it about once a month, and I usually try and read it in two sittings, so I get it all as a big uh, thought. You know, the book of Revelation was written at a time of severe persecution in the early church. And God gave it to his church to encourage them. And I think it would encourage us to read it. Jesus tells us about his plans, his mission, and the end of his mission. Like what he wants to accomplish with us, his believers, with us, his children, with us, his future bride. What he plans on doing. He tells us that he's going to come back to earth as the righteous judge, and he's going to get rid of sin and evil, and death. His plan is to have us live in his presence in the new Jerusalem, to bring about a new heaven and a new earth. I know the word of God is full of mysteries. These aren't things that God doesn't want us to know, but mysteries that he has saved for us, like tender, sweet morsels. So he has given us things that we can know for sure, though he's given us mysteries, things that we have to seek him for. So my saying, never allow the things you don't understand to keep you from the areas of truth in which God has provided clear understanding, I apply that when I read through the book of Revelation. Another thing that really spoke to me that I uh, put in my little uh, Things the Lord Has Said to Me book is um, don't spend much time wondering when the events are going to happen. Spend the majority of your time learning how to live now so that you'll be the prepared bride. God is completely just. God is in control, and his plan is perfect. Evil will be fully destroyed. So what I find exciting about the book of Revelation are the things I do understand. I don't grasp everything. I don't understand everything, and I don't feel that I need to. For me... The last chapters of the book of Revelation bring me into an understanding of the answer as to why Jesus has us on this mission. Because Jesus is telling us the great plan that he has for his church, the end game, the new heaven and the new earth where he's going to reign in righteousness. And we are his people, and we are going to be with him there. He gives us a little window into how glorious he's going to be how wonderful our life is going to be with him there in the New Jerusalem. So if you have your Bible with you, let's open this morning to the book of Revelation to chapter 1. And we're going to read the first uh, three verses. Well, verse 1 and verse 3. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show to his servants, that's us, the things that must soon take place. Verse 3, God blesses the one who reads the words of this prophecy to the church, and he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says, for the time is near. You know, every generation has read these verses. And in every generation, Jesus has said, These things are going to soon take place. He has said, obey, listen, for the time is near. 
In 2 Peter 3, 4, it says, in the last days, many are going to say, where's the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. You know, this was written only 60 years after Jesus was resurrected. They were already tired of waiting. Don't grow weary of waiting. He is returning, and he's told all of us to be ready. You know, the first chapter of the book of Revelation gives us 23 descriptions of what Jesus looks like. And there's more descriptions in the other chapters after that. It tells us what he looks like, what he's doing, and what he's saying to the churches. That's really exciting stuff. And excites me too when I read about the worship scenes, things that are going on in heaven right now. For example, there are 24 elders who have thrones and they're circling around the throne of God. And um, periodically, often, these 24 elders, while all the angels and all the cherubim and all these wonderful things are happening and they're worshiping, they get up and they praise the Lord. They throw themselves down at his feet. They take off their crowns and they throw it at the feet of Jesus and of God the Father as an act of worship. I think that's kind of exciting. And the other exciting thing is the Bible tells us that there are five crowns that we could be awarded in heaven. That all of us, you and me, well, we may not be eligible for all the crowns, but we should be easily able to get at least two or three of them. And then we're going to have a crown that we can do the same thing. We can throw our crowns at the feet of Jesus and worship him. Isn't that wonderful? So what are the crowns? Well, in 2 Timothy, uh, we see that there's the crown of righteousness. This crown is going to be given to all of those who long for the Lord Jesus, who look for Jesus' return. Like, that's a pretty easy crown to have. Boy, so we got one. Then there's the victor's crown. In 1 Corinthians 9, this crown is going to be awarded to those who discipline their minds through the study of God's word and prayer. Well, I think we could all be eligible for that crown. And then there's the crown of glory awarded to the faithful shepherds of the people of God and to Christian leaders. That doesn't mean just pastors. That means anybody, elders, Bible study leaders, Sunday school teachers, uh, people who do all any kind of teaching. This is what you can also have, the crown of glory. Then there's the crown of rejoicing in 1 Thessalonians, which is going to be given to those who have led others to Christ. Well, I think you're all going to receive that crown because as you have sent somebody, me, to the ends of the earth to Guinea, we together have provided for many millions of people to hear the word, plus thousands that have accepted Christ as their Savior. And you have been a part of that. Then there's the crown of life that's going to be placed upon those who have endured and triumphed over trial and temptation and persecution, even to the point of martyrdom. And there are many people, even in Canada, who will receive this crown. So for me, reading through the book of Revelation, which is the revelation of the resurrected Jesus, it helps me to keep my eye on the prize and to remember the end game and to remember to keep my life focused, uh, preparing for the wedding feast, because I know that my Redeemer lives, and I know that he has a plan for me, plans for my future, and gives, gives me a hope. And it helps me focus on Jesus, that he's planning and preparing for his return, and he's preparing a banquet table for us, his beloved. And he's expecting me to be preparing myself to meet him as his prepared bride for that banquet. The entire word of God, the entire counsel of the word of God is my preparation manual. And he has a reward prepared for me for the things I do for him in the here and the now. Like that nice white linen garment that he's preparing for me. In Luke 14, Jesus was teaching about humility while he was at a banquet. 
He said to his host, when you put on a luncheon or a banquet, don't invite your friends, your brothers, your relatives, and rich neighbors, for they will invite you back, and that's going to be your only reward. Instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Then at the resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who couldn't repay you. The people of Guinea cannot repay you for how you have partnered with God. They can't repay you for the sacrifices that you made to bring the good news of the kingdom. But Jesus promises that he has a reward for you because you are a part of making it possible for them to be on the list of the invited ones to the banquet, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I know that God is providing opportunities for you to show your kindness to people who are in your Jerusalem, in your community. These are trying days, and there are many people next to you that live without hope, without a certainty of what the future is holding for them. They need you. They need you to share your hope with them. Perhaps a simple act of kindness to a neighbor would be the display of your peace in these troubled times and show them the hope that Christ has given to you. Revelation 19, 9, and the angel said, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, These are true words that come from God. Perhaps you know somebody that hasn't yet received their invitation to the wedding feast. So, your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to hand out wedding invitations. In that invitation, you will share with your neighbor the hope that is within you. And as it is written in 1 Peter 3.15, do it with gentleness and respect. And as God has promised, he's going to give you his promise. As written in 1 Thessalonians 2.19, the crown of rejoicing as your reward. And these are the true words that come from God. So let us continue to partner with Jesus on our mission to do what Matthew 15, 16 says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to the Father who's in heaven. Amen. That's a pretty good reason. Why? <laughs> Thank you, Colette. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to the house. In the same way, we give glory to our Father. I'm going to ask that you uh, position yourselves however you desire. You can stand, you can sit. I was thinking of uh, when Jesus gave that command to go. Um, he said, wait for, for power to come up from on high, right? He said, go to Jerusalem and wait. Does anyone here need a fresh filling of his spirit? I do. So would you position yourselves? I'm going to sing a song over you. You're welcome to join in. It's one I wrote probably a year and a half ago, I guess. I'm just going to sing this over us. And uh, just receive a fresh filling of his spirit, of his power, of his courage and boldness to speak his name. He's upon you to preach good news, to 
Bring light to the darkness and bind broken hearts. To bring freedom to captives and sight to the blind in Jesus' name. Oh, Spirit, come. Oh, Spirit, come. The Spirit of God is upon you to preach good news, to bring light to the darkness and bind broken hearts, to bring freedom to captives and sight to the blind in Jesus' name. Oh, oh, Spirit, come. Oh, oh, Spirit, come. Stir it up in our hearts, a passion for Jesus' name. Stir it up in our hearts, a passion for Jesus' faith. Let love flow like a river and peace come. Let love flow like a river and peace come. Let peace come. Let peace come. Let us be instruments of your peace and carriers of your love, O oh God. The Spirit of God is upon you to preach good news, to bring light to the darkness and bind broken hearts, to bring freedom to captives and sight to the blind in Jesus' name. Oh, Spirit, come.
Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Jesus, come. At the end of Revelations, the last words that are written there, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Come, Lord Jesus. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Two thoughts that came out of what, uh, what Colette shared, two things Colette said. Go out into all the world is like going out into all the world is like going out to our front door. And the Holy Spirit gives us assignments we can't do in our own strength. So we need the Spirit. We need the Spirit. Would you stand? Put yourself into a position of receiving whatever that looks like to you because we need more of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, fall on your people now, Lord. Lord, we know that your Spirit, you Holy Spirit, convince us that we are children of God. Assurance of salvation. How good is that? That you, Spirit, you assure, you assure us, you convince us that we're children of God. So good. And you, Spirit, you equip and empower the people of God to do good works. How good is that? And so, Holy Spirit, come and fill, fall upon your people and fill your church. We need you. We need you, Holy Spirit, to speak the words of Jesus, to lead people to the love of the Father, as Colette shared, to give them this wedding invitation. And so, Holy Spirit, come. Fill your people. I just bless you, church, with a fresh, a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit over you, that you'll be filled to all the fullness. This is the blood of bought gift from Jesus Christ. Jesus went, died on the cross and went back into heaven that you would be filled with the Spirit. So be filled. And Father, may you gain honor and glory and praise as your people receive all that you have for them. So use us this week, this month, this year, Lord, to go out our front door, to go out on mission, filled with your Spirit, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ and revealing to the world the love of you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Jesus. We love you. We pray these things in your powerful name. Amen. Amen. So there going to be people up here at the front for prayer. Uh, as we close off our service, if you want prayer, come forward to the front. Uh, we just, I just bless you. Bless you as you go from here. You're dismissed. Thank you for joining us on our live stream today. We hope that you were encouraged. We hope that you experienced the love, presence, and power of Jesus Christ today. If you're interested in learning more about the activities that go on um, outside the Sunday service, or if you're wanting to send in a prayer request or request that you receive a phone call from one of our pastors or elders, right now send uh, the word CONNECT to 587 209-0101 and from there you'll be redirected to a place that you can get connected in the way that you're hoping for. We look forward to connecting with you.